during your stay in his office. Yes, that is the Matrix. This is the moment where Keanu Reeves takes the red pill and discovers what the world is about. So, I mean, since the Enlightenment, I think in the West we've had this notion. Uh, if you had an image of what knowledge looks like, it's that there are these surface things that are sort of readily visible to us, but then there's this deep structure. And that what we do as scientists or reasoners is see beyond mere appearance into what's the underlying grammar or deep structure behind it. And the quick way to do that is to take the red pill and you go from what you think you're walking around in the normal world to realize that you're actually a battery powering alien systems or whatever the hell it was in the matrix. <laughs> uh, and weirdly enough, to make it even more alternative, um, the so, so what you're supposed to believe in is the deep structure, that there is some underlying truth and we can figure it out if we use the right methods, if we use science or some kind of agreed upon procedure to get at, uh, to get at that deep structure. Taking a pill is a lot easier than going to graduate school, I think. But, um, but what's weird now is that red pill has now become a verb used by folks on the right and so to be red-pilled is to realize that actually the Illuminati controls a world or George Soros is pulling the strings. And so it's now become, it had gone from this hipster meme about you know, understanding the deep structure. Now it's used very heavily on folks on, I don't know, Stormfront or, or uh, Infowars. To be red-pilled is to see beyond the mainstream media and their version of truth to what the real truth is. So now red-pilled has taken on this different meaning. Uh, so I don't think that's what we should believe, but it is what a lot of people believe. It's sort of this uh, interesting era that we're living in. Yeah, great. Thank you. I've not been spending enough time on InfoWars, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> or have you? <laughs> or have you? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Dirk, we're moving to you next. With, uh, yeah, so this is um, a Renaissance picture, um, the tail end of the Renaissance. So what should we believe? And the big discovery of the Renaissance was basically to paint nature as they saw it, rather than they should have seen it in, if you go only 150 years back, it was very iconographic. And I think the biggest thing, which is beautiful here, you see uh, the building with perspective, I mean, that was a big invention of the Renaissance. I mean, you have all these tiled floor, not because they actually had them, but because that allowed them to play with perspective. So, and then you see the sky, all these things were very, um, partly ideologically, uh, through the church context in which art then happened, uh, not accepted. So that's one thing, I think, see the world as it is. And we are still capable. But of course, we are also, this is a school of philosophy. So I think deliberation uh, and, you know, we are, you know, dealing with, with differently constructed realities, of course, with what we have done today and yesterday is a good example of it. So, yes, that's what we should believe. You know, I, what we see and what we come around with in deliberation with people who also see the world. Okay. But we would believe they had tiled floors. If they <laughs> that was fascinating. I didn't know that. Thank you. I told you art history lesson as well, so this is great. Um, okay. Yeah, mine is not about the what, it's more about the who we should believe. So these are people from the Irish. Uh, independence movement, most of them were executed for their beliefs. Mm. And to look at the other side, uh, in financial markets, we should not believe are those clear financial conflict of interest. The auditor gets paid to basically approve the statement, the credit rater gets paid to give a good credit rating, mm. the investment market gets paid to find dumb money uh, that doesn't ask questions like the Black Rocks or the Vanguards. Mm. And so in a finance setting, it's pretty clear who we should not believe, which are those that get paid for their views. And then who we believe among the others is subject to us, but I think it's pretty good to say not to believe. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, okay, and Janelle, going to you, very, <laughs> a big picture view here. Yeah, so yeah. This, is, this is planet Earth as seen from space. And the first, this isn't the first photo of Earth taken from space, it was from the Apollo mission. And it had a revolutionary impact on the environmental movement because it was the first time human beings really saw planet Earth as something that was fragile. It's this little delicate life support system in the vastness of space. 
So that was one thought with this picture. The other was Frank Drake, who's mm. a radio astronomer and came up with the Drake equation in 1961 that is a way to calculate the probability of intelligent life in the universe and life capable of broadcasting signals of its, its existence into space. And so a number of astronomers and physicists have done work with the equation. Carl Sagan took it and he did various calculations and hypothesized that the reason we see no, we, that, that the probability should actually be quite high of intelligent life in space, but the reason we see no evidence of other life anywhere in the universe is because as soon as civilizations become or develop the technological capacity to broadcast their existence into space, they soon destroy themselves. Right? So I think it's a chilling message for our day and age. We're, you know, in an astronomical moment where we've, in the last decades, developed that capability, but we're also, by all indications of the biosphere, in, a, you know, the planet is in decline. So. Thank you.